Hey, what's up guys? So this tutorial is going to be an introduction to Angular slash TypeScript and what we're going to be making is a to-do list app using JSON placeholder data. So we're going to be getting the data from here. As you can see, nice and simple, a lot of data to play with. And we're going to be rendering this basically into a grid and displaying it with Angular and TypeScript functions. Alright, so the first thing you want to do is install Node.js if you don't have it. And then uh, in Node.js you're going to want to run this command if you do not have uh, Angular npm install at angular cli. Uh, the g flag is just so you install it globally so you can run ng commands wherever. So in an ng command example would be ng to do list so, oh, ng n. So you could either between these two write n or new. I'm going to write n. And this creates a new angular app basically in this directory. So let's just run that. And uh, it'll ask you for some options, so would you like to add Angular routing? We're not going to need it for this project, so we won't. We're going to use CSS. It's going to install all the packages, and we'll see uh, what that looks like when that's done. Alright, so if we want to render this out to the browser, what we can do is, uh, real quick, we can do cd to do oh, list ng serve. And then this will uh, basically build our application. We just got to make sure that we're in the uh, directory that we just made. Otherwise, it won't work. And then this uh, we'll be able to pull it up in the browser. So we'll see what that looks like when that's done. All right, so after it's done building, if you go to port 42,000 or uh, 4200 in the browser, you can see the default Angular uh, page comes up, and it tells you how to generate new components. But we're actually not going to be working with specific components in this. We're just going to be deep diving sort of into some of the features inside of one component. So if we go into Visual Studio Code with this by opening a new tab here, code dot to get the current directory, we can see our stuff. And if you go to the very top where you see source, go into app, and then this is what we're mainly going to be working with in this course. We're going to be we're going to be fetching a data set from JSON placeholder, as I said, and then we're going to be uh, we're going to be basically just rendering it onto the page. All right. So the next thing that we want to do is inside of our app.component.html, you're going to want to delete this all. You can see there's a lot of stuff here. This is basically just from the default page. It was just making it look nice to start off. And uh, here we go. If we want to just return right now in H1, we say hello world, it will come up. And uh, the way this works basically is inside of this, this is an uh, Angular likes to work on an SPA model, which is a single page application as opposed to something like .NET it uses an MVC, which is a model view controller. And those are just different ways basically of, of having a full stack application architecture set up. So right here what's happening is this is our, our single page, if you will, and right here we, we see this component, app root. So if you know HTML, you probably know that app root is not a uh, native HTML5 element. And the reason that we're able to call that here is because in this uh, TypeScript file here, we see selector app root, which basically allows um, it allows us to have custom HTML elements in this, and this is one of the nice things about Angular, is just how uh, how kind of front to back I guess it feels developing in. But that's also the reason that it kind of is known to have a, a harder learning curve, and it's also like there's more there's more stuff out of the box than most of the other frameworks. So what this is known as is a TypeScript decorator, and what this basically does is uh, when we export it here, it allows us to pass data into our template. And um, it obviously exports the HTML element. And this is where we're going to basically be fetching our data. So if you want to see kind of a way to think about this, it's uh, so if we want to do rand uh, random, oh, oh my god, typing is hard. Ra random equals math dot random. Oh. And if we want to render this out, we can do hello world. And then in a P element, we could do random. And you can see, oh, hold on. Okay, so we forgot to save our file. Uh, so if we will see it now, and you can see that every single time we reload the page, there's a new math.random. And that's because every time the component is rendered, the stuff under here 
is reapplied, so it gets a new random number each time. And that can be the same with all data in terms of uh, conditionals and things like that. And this is where you would basically want to put those conditionals. So to start out, we're going to use two default uh, methods. We're going to use constructor and we're going to use ng on init. And these are both run when the component is rendered. So one other thing we're going to do is we're going to do this set posts here and we're going to create that method right now. We're actually going to create the variable for it too. So we're going to set posts equal to an empty array. And then we're going to create a function called set posts. And the way that we can do this is we do set posts and then after that a colon and we do void so that it's we know it's not returning anything. Then we open the braces and we can do console.log high. And just so show you there how that works. Okay, my bad, my, my, my VM uh, where froze right quick there. So anyway, console.log high, and this is going to be called as a constructor to this uh, to this component. So we can see in the console high, it's run, and the math.randoms run. It's all, uh, it's all happening on one thread. And then uh, basically we'll see how this can be used in the next step for uh, getting data. So if we want to move set posts into ng on init, and we reopen the browser, we can see that we get exactly the same result, except um, we're in a different function. So you can see how these function similarly. All right, so without further ado, we're going to start fetching the data. So I'm going to paste in here my fetch method. We're using JSON placeholder, just like we said. And what basically this request is getting is this data. And then we're returning a promise where the data is converted into a JSON object. And then the response is put through a loop for each response object because each one returns a post. So like each uh, closure here represents one object and that's why we need to call the for each there so that we get each individual object and then we can continue, we can get all the data from it and we can basically uh, set our post array equal to this array. So to make sure that we got our data successfully inside the ng on init function, uh, I separated them to basically remind you guys that they're they're very similar in that way. We're just basically going to console log this dot posts, and what this is basically going to do, it's going to return our posts array, and we can see all of the posts that we just got from the database, which is exactly what this is. But it, we got it basically uh, in in our application now, so we can begin to render it. So something I have to mention before we continue moving forward is now that we have this separate function for getting the posts, what we want to do is um, we have to, if we want to run this, it's not going to work unless we, um, unless we call it inside of a, inside of a, a set timeout, sorry, <laughs> brain farted. And that's because um, the data basically needs a second to set itself before we can render it. So like if we wanted to do this post zero here, it'll return undefined as you can see. And the reason for that is because this is all gonna run at the same time, but if the posts aren't set yet, then it has no uh, zeroth element, if you will, to parse from. So the way that we can do this, and it would do the same thing just to be uh, just to be clear. So if we do this dot set or get posts and we passed in 20, it wouldn't actually work because it's happening at the exact same time. So it can't get title of undefined because it, it doesn't have a second to process. So if we change this to set timeout, and we gotta wrap that over here. And then we, if we call an anonymous function, an arrow function it to this dot get post 20, then we add a comma here and then this is our timeout argument. So let's say 2000 milliseconds, about two seconds should be enough to get the data. So if we do that, we can see it works and it gets the first 20 titles. We could get the first 10, 10, not a thousand, 10 titles. And we could get the first five titles and so on. So you get the point there. But basically, basically just having a set timeout when you're getting data, if you're trying to, uh, if you're trying to retrieve it, you want to make sure that you make it a little delayed so that it can actually have the time to get the data and process it before it uh, just throws you undefined or an error or something like that. 
Alright, so now we're going to find ourselves in our app.component.html, and the way that we're going to render this data is we're going to do div class of container, and then inside of that we're going to do div class equals to do, and then uh, we're going to be calling what's known as a, a core directive from Angular, and it's going to be a dot asterisk ng4 equals let post of posts and then this is going to be basically getting this from our post uh, posts array and each it's basically a for each loop in, in angular essentially so what we're doing here is p post title and then inside the double bra uh, braces we're going to do post dot title and then inside of uh, this other one we're going to do user id we're going to do post user id and then these are basically from our data objects that we fetched in our state and then if we see how that looks we can see that we're getting all the posts and we're rendering them out front but obviously we have a we have a data list instead of a, a data grid or some other kind of presentable format so in the next step we're going to just look at how to uh, how to style this kind of stuff properly so in our app.component.css, the first thing we're going to want to do is define our container, and these are coming from a, uh, these are coming from these classes, container and to do, and so we're going to do display grid, and then we're going to do grid template columns, we're going to do repeat five twenty percent, we're going to do text align center grid template rows repeat 25 percent you could probably see the relationship between these two that is on purpose um, and then so we're going to do justify content space between now we're going to see how that looks on its own we can see now that we have like grid cells if you will going on here and um, all the objects are kind of looking more more organized and everything uh, so now what we are going to have is our to-do, and we're just going to do a border of one pixels, solid black, and now they're just going to sort of look like grid elements even more so. And so yeah, that is essentially uh, a crash course for beginners on how to fetch and display data in Angular. And typically, you're going to want to do this all in, in like individual components and everything. But I just wanted to sort of dive in in a really simple and kind of a, a, a way that I guess, it, you know, has the viewer's time in mind with kind of content and, and mashing it all in there without any of the fluff. That's why I use a lot of cuts and uh, I just cut out all the parts where I just kind of go on tangents. It's pretty meta right now. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. And if uh, you want to see more of this kind of content, make sure to like and subscribe.